Professor Peter Ngao, Director of the Centre for Urban Research and Innovations at the University of Nairobi. Welcome to the JSO interview. Thank you, John. Professor, tell us something about your career by way of a start. Well, I am a professor of urban planning. I teach at the University of Nairobi for the last 20 years. And at the same time, I advise cities on how to prepare their plans, urban plans. I also uh, do research on urban planning to find ways in which cities can be more livable. What is urban planning, in your words? Uh, urban planning is both an art and a science. By that I mean, um, as an art, it is about uh, where people live and how good the places people live. We need to make places where people live livable and pleasant. Uh, it is also a science because it is one of the things which nowadays people tend to see as a hope for livelihood in the sense that we have transportation there, we have industries there, and how to manage all those things requires a lot of understanding of those relationships. I would like us to focus on the 20 odd minutes that we've got on the Kenya of today, but we have to go back in the past and I'm going to give you an image that the cities that we live in, the myth is that they were very well planned by the colonials who ruled in their day and that when government was passed off to Africans, to Kenyans themselves, everything went downhill and now it's a mess. Uh, if we need to look at our country, first we need to understand uh, urban features, um, recent developments of the last century, especially in the upcountry part of the country. But we have had history of urbanization for many, many centuries at the coastal area. And those were not done necessarily by Europeans. They were done partly by Africans and partly by other visitors. It is true when Europeans came in, they created uh, urban places a lot along the lines which they had urban places in their home areas. And uh, the policy was first of segregation. Africans were re confined in the rural areas. So the cities which we were seeing in the early years of colonial period were cities which were only for a few people. And they tended to look uh, well organized uh, they tended to function well, and it is true, this was the picture people usually have of urban areas. Um, there was a lot of uh, order, there was a lot of, uh, you know, discipline. Uh, when we got independence, one of the things Kenya government did was to uh, remove the restrictions on migration. And many people came from rural areas to the urban areas. Now, in the urban areas, one of the challenges was that these people were not able to get employment immediately. They were not able to get housing. So, uh, as, as you might say, that both the young African government was faced with a major challenge of receiving a large number of people coming in and not having the resources to house these people or to provide employment. But that, I think... That, that's a good point for me to cut in. And, and I, again, because of time, so we, we were in a bad place, so to speak, and then we had a major problem with the great exodus into the, the cities. In the run-up to the elections, one of the criticisms that was made to uh, one Raila Odinga, specifically as a politician, mm -hmm. is that he'd been the MP for Kibra for all those years, the 20 years that you were also uh, practicing academics, mm -hmm. and they had brought no development to Kibra. It was his fault. Now, you're the academic. What were you doing in those 20 years to make sure that Kibra improved, apart from writing academic papers? Uh, I think the blame can be on all Kenyans who have had some leadership or not, because Kibera is just one of the slums in Kenya. We have many, many other slums. Uh, and the fact is uh, the planners have tried to guide the cities and against very difficult circumstances where, for example, there is a huge uh, immigration into the cities. 
there is less resources to build uh, adequate housing. But we also have had policies which were not very uh, pro-people and policies which were very in, uh, exclusive. I think the blame or the, the cause of the current situation can be put in terms of the policies of the past which were not inclusive. Uh, it can be put on the reality of our young country in terms of uh, the mass and uh, you know immigration into the into the urban areas, uh, but that is something now which we need to move on and deal with. Right. I'm still going back to the role of an urban planner such as yourself, and we have to get into the present almost immediately. Uh, the new constitution, devolved government, county government. Mm -hmm. Are you? Because uh, the role of the academic mm -hmm. in the conduct of society. Are you going to play a role in the urban structures of the future and people like yourself? And what are you going to do? Uh, as, a, as a professor of uh, urban planning, as a person who prepares plans, as a person who has devices on urban planning, uh, we have a major responsibility and we know there are areas we have failed. In the sense that uh, in the beginning, most of the urban planning done in our country was done in terms of looking at trying to create our cities like Western cities. But imitation, imitation, pure imitation of the Western model. Yes, but without understanding the reality of our, of our, of our country, of but our But Professor, that hasn't changed. All mm. the images of the, of the, the cities, the urban, uh, the gated communities of the future, the skyscrapers, the tallest buildings in the world are going to be built in Nairobi. These are Western constructs of architectural and planning? They are both Western and, uh, but also universal. I think there are elements which when we say... So aren't you develops, contradicting yourself by saying we were always guided by a Western model and now you're saying it's universal? What uh, we were not getting particularly was the aspect of our society. Our society in terms of income levels, in terms of our needs, we were not factoring that. Even in the Western countries, they actually have systems which care for the low income. And I think that is where I'm saying we actually fail to see the reality. There's nothing wrong with the building skyscrapers. Mm. It is, they are based on the theories of why it is better to have people in highly concentrated places. There's nothing wrong with having highways. They are based on the economies of scale. But as we do that, those highways, they need also to have places where people of low income can go to, to work. They need to have places where people can walk, uh, bicycles, non-motorized. I think that is where I'm and saying... And also just uh, generally ha have a good time, as go to the park, yes. uh, the idea of a central park in New York dedicated to children playing, areas... For in the Nairobi that we have today, Professor, I think all of this is being lost. I don't think that the, I can see changes on the ground that suggest that this wonderful sunlit future is, a, is upon us. Let me tell you, John, we have a beautiful city. Our city, for many people, people who come here, they appreciate we have managed to keep some of our natural, um, beautiful places here. We have a national park right in the middle of the city. We have good uh, open spaces. We have parks. We have, uh, you know, forests in our city. I think the issue is how much are we getting, integrating our people and getting them to use these very important resources. Uh, and both this has to do with the policies we are making. Right now, Nairobi City is in the involved in a very major program of uh, city beautification and uh, trying to sell the, the places which people can go and rest so that people are not just confined to their houses. They are places they can take their children. I think as, as I, I was growing up, I used to go to Nairobi uh, Uru Park and uh, you still see a lot of people going out there.